Hey there, Joe Braun here, the DCS Mech Warriors. In this video, we're going to make an op mode to use a color sensor from Rev Robotics. So let me switch over to my screen here and we'll get started. As in previous videos, we're going to open up Team Code, Java, and then the folder we've been working on, uh, YouTube. It's actually called a package. And then uh, two videos ago, we made one for the IMU. Uh, yesterday's video we did for the distance sensor. Today we're going to do a color sensor. So I'm going to copy distance sensor by right clicking and come down to copy. I'm going to go back up to YouTube and paste that in there. And then it's going to ask me a name for this new one. So just like uh, the previous video, we had a distance sensor, but we didn't call it distance sensor because that class name is used in the FTC repository. So we just call it dist sensor. Um, we're going to do the same, uh, something similar for this video. We'll just call it cold sensor for short, little short for color. Um, so sensor and then push enter. And so we have our new class name for this op mode that we're going to continue to layer another sensor in, in this case, the color sensor. So we're going to go to our configuration file where we keep the notes for our configuration file anyway, and put in an I squared C port. Uh, we're doing two, it looks like, and then color sensor. Um, that should be a lowercase C, so let me fix that. So color sensor. And we're doing this in what's called lower camel case. First letter is lowercase. Uh, the every word after that's capitalized with no spaces in between. So that's all set up. We would need to go into our driver hub and manually put in those settings. Um, but this is uh, where we have all of our notes, so we can just look it up all in one place. So uh, the disabled we, uh, for our classroom, we're still going to leave that as disabled. You would want to go ahead and comment that out so that you see it when you upload the code. Uh, our group, we're going to, for, again, our classroom, because this is the computer that our team actually programs on, uh, we're going to leave this as examples. And then our class name that we just did. And then you see all the variables that we did in the previous two videos in this series. So I'm going to put in some space here right before our servo so we can drop in our variables for our color sensor. And I'm looking for those. I think I went down. Oh, I didn't open up uh, my notes. I'm looking for my notes and they're not there. So let me do that real quick. Uh, new member training and go down to color sensor. I'm going to drag this down to the bottom and then minimize the side menu. So there we go. That looks a little more familiar. Uh, so I'm going to take my variables from my notes here and just drop those in so you don't have to watch me type very slowly. And then uh, we'll discuss them. So uh, we're calling a, uh, we're setting the keyword to private here for our access modifier. In other words, it can't be changed outside of this class. Uh, we're pulling in color sensors, so it should up here in imports, pull in a color sensor somewhere right there. Okay, so it did that automatically for us. And then uh, our variable name is color sensor. We're going to also set up some more variables for the values that we can pull from that color sensor. And we're going to set a target value. So we've discussed variables in uh, pretty, pr pretty great detail. So we'll skip that for this particular video. Um, and then we're all set for our variables. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and scroll down and look at the run op mode. So we're going to have to make some changes here. So instead of using... Um, well, I'm on the wrong menu. Let me go here. There we go. We're not going to be using distance sensor telemetry. So I'm going to go ahead and comment, comment out this line. I'm pushing control forward slash, and that adds the comments. And then right here, I'm going to do the same thing because we're not using the distance sensor telemetry. We're going to create a new function for our color sensor telemetry, and that'll go in in these two spaces. So let me just go ahead and create a space to add those here in a second. Uh, Teleop controls we're still going to use. So this is starting to look good. There is another function that we'll drop in here, but as we discuss that, we'll get to it. So uh, the next thing that I want to do is actually just drop down and start putting in our hardware pieces. So the next piece that we're going to put in is right here below the distance sensor. We want to create a method to init our uh, color sensor. So that is right here. It's only one line of code doing the hardware map so that the robot controller knows where to find that piece of hardware. So again, our Java variable is color sensor, our config name is color sensor, and we're hardware mapping those uh, so that they know 
where it's located at on the driver hub. And then the class that we're using is the color sensor. So this is all set up. Now that we have a new piece of hardware, what we wanna do is come back up here to our method stack for init hardware, and we're gonna add that in. So we're gonna init, in this case, the color sensor. So just push tab, highlight the correct one, push tab, and it'll drop it in. Okay, and then this method is initting all the hardware in the order that we want, and that's being called here in the run op mode. So our hardware is all set up as far as the initial, um, initial settings. We only need the one setting for the color sensor. So the next thing that I wanna do is create this method that is gonna use the variables that we created at the beginning and store the value from the sensor in the variable space that we created. So I'm gonna do that right below, I think I'm gonna put it right here below the teleop controls. Um, so I'm gonna paste that in. So again, public void and then the function name. We're going to use this variable red value, which we created in the opener up here. So variable that's not instantiated to mean anything. You could set it to zero if you wanted. Um, but down here, we are setting that, uh, lost where it's at, there we go. We're setting that to whatever we're pulling from the red value off of the color sensor now that we have that functionality set up uh, up here in our init, okay? So we're doing that for every one of these values. Now, alpha value is similar to, uh, in FLL, we had something called uh, light intensity. So we use that a lot on our color sensors in FLL. Um, and most of my team at this point started in FLL and have ranked up um, or leveled up into FTC. So that's what the L alpha value is. So you can pull a red, green, and blue value. Uh, so if you're looking for a blue object, you can focus specifically on that color, or you can use the color light intensity or the alpha value as it's used in the Rev uh, color sensor. So um, that's the difference there. And then the value is just something I made up, just randomly created a number that we're looking for as a thousand. We'll discuss that a little more here in a second. So we have this function that we've created for get color, but we're not actually using it because it's grayed out. So what we want to do is come up and add that function in to our while loop before play is started. We're gonna go ahead and start storing those numbers. So I think I called that get color, there we go. So get color is our function. And then when we are in our while loop, so we've pressed play and we're in our um, op mode is active while loop, we wanna actually pull that also. So we're gonna constantly be getting the color every time it runs through this loop and then storing that into the values up here that we created for our, our variables, okay? So that's what that function is doing and that's in place now. So the next thing that we want to do is, we'll come back to teleop controls. Let me go ahead and create our telemetry. So I'm gonna copy this one and we're going to just, um, in, in some videos, like the servo videos, DC motor videos, we went ahead and just kept changing um, what was inside this function. We're just gonna create a separate function. So again, this is my class bracket right here, and this is the end bracket for this function. So I wanna make sure that I'm not outside of this class bracket, because if I pasted it here, we're gonna get a bunch of errors. So let me control Z to undo that. And what I wanna do is place it right here. So I'm gonna put two enters in and paste and then that function is inside the class bracket in the appropriate spot. Let me get rid of the extra line there. All right, so now um, these are grayed out because we're not using those. We uh, took them out of the run op mode and now we have our new telemetry that basically is going to whatever is stored in the variable of red value, that's the label that we're using, whatever stored in the variable of red value, it's gonna display it on the driver hub with two decimals. Okay, so if you wanted four decimals, you could change that to a four. Um, so that's pretty straightforward, especially if you're following along with the series. So what we're gonna do is control C on this um, function name or method name, and we're gonna come all the way back up to the top, and we're gonna output that telemetry right after we get the color and change the variables to update what it's seeing at that moment. It's then gonna update that and send that to the driver hub. I'm gonna put my two parentheses and my semicolon to end the statement. And I'm just gonna copy this so I don't have to do that again. And after we get color, we're gonna add in our telemetry again. All right, so now the last thing we wanna do is get our servo that we already have 
uh, we've already installed it in the last video. We already made it, uh, input it into the op mode. So that servo that's already in place, we wanted to do something now based on the color sensor instead of the distance sensor like we did last time. So what we need to do is come down here and change that. So in teleop controls, we have functionality for distance sensor um, and we don't want to use that right now. So we're just going to comment that out. And I'm going to put in a couple enters here and we're going to put in our color sensor uh, conditional statement. And I think I passed it somewhere down here. There we go. There it is right there. So now inside our teleop controls, we want this, uh, these few lines of code. So let's paste that in and we'll discuss it again. It's using the same ideas that the distance sensor did. So if you followed along with that video, this is going to seem very familiar. Um, so in this instance, we're going to look, um, let me go over conditionals, I guess, real quick. So if this statement here is true, so we'll talk about the math of that here in a second. It wants to run this code in this code block. Else, in other words, if this is false, it's going to run this no matter what. So this code block, it's going to run no matter what um, if this is false. So if this is true, it's going to run this one. If it's false, it's going to run that one. Okay, so what is the functionality um, that we're actually running here? So we're setting servo 1 to position 2 if it sees this as a true statement. And then if it doesn't, it's going to set it back to position 1. Uh, in our init phase. So if we go back up here to the top and look at servo one, when we um, actually not init, um, init is at 50%, position one is at zero, and position two is 100%. So these are the two end stops of the servo. This is all the way one way. This is all the way the other way, 100% the other way, and 50% would be in the middle. So when we init our uh, servo, it's going to go to the middle position. As soon as we push play, that servo is going to move, depending on what the color sensor sees, to either the first position or the second position. Okay, so let me come back down. And we didn't discuss the math in the uh, teleop controls, so let's look at that. So the alpha value, we're only doing one example here, even though we have four values captured. Um, you can use any one of these to get your servo or DC motor or whatever you're using to do something. Um, but right now we're just using the alpha value. So whatever number that the color sensor is getting for the alpha value, if that is greater than our target value, so say our target, well, our target value is a thousand. So say our alpha value, I'm trying to find that here real quick. So our target value is a thousand. So say our alpha value is uh, 1500, so it's bigger. If it's greater than that, um, 1,000 target, it's going to execute this line of code. If it's less than that, it's going to, less than or equal actually, um, it's going to execute this line of code. So you can get your servo to move to a certain position based on something that it sees. And you can again pick which value that is. Alpha value was uh, the color of the color light intensity, or you could use specifically the red, green, or blue values, depending on what you're wanting to do with your robot. So I think we've covered everything, but I guess I should look at my notes real quick, make sure I inserted everything, and then we'll talk about what we're going to do in the next video, which I haven't even looked at it, so I do not know. Uh, looks like we're going to be talking about the touch sensor. Uh, just a quick note on that, touch sensor and magnetic limit switch uses the exact same code, depending on which one you want to use. The coding would be exactly the same. Matter of fact, Limit Switch um, uses Touch Sensor as its class uh, call. Okay, so uh, we'll be talking about that in the next video. If you're interested, stick around and hope you have an awesome day. Catch you in the next video. Bye bye.